Good morning. Yesterday we brought in to you uh, some concepts in the idea of praying with accuracy. How to pray for others, how to meet someone and really impart upon them a ministry that will stay and make fruits and have fruits. And uh, for, for over 50 years, this has been my goal, my desire, is to pray for people, but with let of, the, of God instead of me creating conversation. That's the, the issue of this latest book, Praying with Accuracy, how to pray and actually get somewhere with somebody. Uh, and so uh, yesterday I shared some concepts with you, is that when uh, Satan begins to operate his kingdom over us, it involves a lot of time. It takes time. It takes hours on end to finally arrive to a conclusion, or uh, it slows down the process of development. And also takes space in, in our brain and our intellect because it consumes our thinking. Now, when God is in a prayer, it's real fast. There is, there is a, a speed of light uh, in terms of revelation, in terms of knowledge, in terms of what's going on. And I want to give you an example of that so you're able to sort of understand what I'm talking about. In John chapter 9, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And, of course, the disciples were referring to the idea that every illness that ever happened there uh, is related to sin. And, of course, as we study the gospel, we come to an easy conclusion that that illness is related to sins, sins of others, demonic activity, hereditary conditions, and for the glory of God. These are the five examples of all the miracles of Jesus and how uh, the root of the miracles. Some is to sin, but some has nothing to do with you. It has to do with somebody else on us. And then some is demonic activity in the first degree. And then... Hereditary situations, you know, it, it's not you that brought the sickness. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a condition that came in uh, through the family and through the bloodline. And then some illnesses are for the glory of God. They're instantly healed. And, and, uh, and so, but the disciples could not understand that. And so Jesus answered them and said, neither has this man sinned nor his parents. Meaning that the reason why the man was blind, it had to do not with uh, uh, the, 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 the sin the man had or his parents. Because you see, every time we get sick or somebody loved of us gets sick or friends of ours get sick, we seem to indicate that something was sinful and, and, and sin caused that illness. Well, that's, that's really uh, uh, a nonsense what really caused the illness in this man's life is that God wanted to do a glorious things about him. So Jesus exonerates the father and the parents and the men and simply said to, to the disciples, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Meaning that the works of God be manifested. In other words, the man uh, became sick so God could show his glory in his life. So that simplifies it. That, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? That as you pray for others, you shouldn't uh, assume that uh, the illness is directly related to sin. Now, so I'm going to repeat what I just said. If you study the miracles, and one of the ways to study the miracles is for you to get an NIV uh, translation of the Bible. And just before the Gospel of John, the study Bible of NIV will have a division about the illnesses, and it's a very good division. Whoever, whoever wrote that 
studied the scriptures, studied the miracles, and paid attention to it. It's the only, only, <laughs> only uh, argument I have uh, besides my understanding of scriptures that comes from the outside is this page of the NIV. What do they do? They mention there are 22 or so miracles related to the mind and to the body. And then there are nine miracles related to nature. And then there are three miracles that are related to the resurrection of the dead. I'm not saying that this is all, all the miracles that Jesus performed. There are many, 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 many others. But these are the ones that, are, that we see in study. So 22, 9, and, and 3 is how much? 34. Meaning these are the ones who you can study. Are there other miracles? Oh, my gosh, there's thousands of miracles. For instance, when Jesus put the ear back on the soldier at Gethsemane before the crucifixion, that's a powerful miracle. Uh, when Jesus resurrected from the dead, came outside of the tomb, and he met uh, Mary Magdalene, that, uh, she had seven demons, and that is not even recorded in the Bible. And so that's a powerful miracle. And so during these studies this week, we're going to deal with these things that are very important in terms of how to understand praying with accuracy. And I hope that you are uh, uh, listening, and if you'd like to listen again, you go into our website, and there's a place, for, it says archives. And these, are being, uh, these studies are being posted and you can go and play it again and, and listen to what I'm saying because some of these things are very new to you. It's very new to a lot of people. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 some of you never heard about this. But if you've been with me in my last 40, 50 years, as I begin to pray for people, I know exactly where to go. I know exactly the problem. And I have a lot of fruits in my ministry. And so I, I'm getting old, and I want to pass this to you, especially uh, to those of you that are listening in our studio, so you're able to continue your ministry and pray with accuracy. Okay? So that, that will help you not to bubble, take a long time, and, uh, and waste a lot of time in prayer. Now, Having said this, I want to repeat that the 34 miracles that we're referring to have a basic root, a reason. Some of them were related to sin. Some, not the person's sin, but what others did to us, such as a company that uses chemicals and pours them in the river, and you drink the water of the river. So they are unrelated. For instance, Peter's uh, Peter, mother-in-law, had fever. It wasn't because of sin. It, it was because of uh, a bug that passed by Capernaum and made her have, <laughs> have a fever. Some are related to exactly first-degree demonic activity. And if you don't believe that, just, just, uh, just look to Luke uh, eleven thirteen. As Jesus refers to a woman having a spirit of infirmity, that should fix your theology right away. If you think that Jesus in the Gospels is the truth in the Word of God, then, then Luke eleven thirteen should just change your mind about demonic activity. Uh, she was sick because uh, she had a spirit of infirmity, and Jesus healed her, Luke eleven thirteen. Well, that's not the only example. There are many examples of that. And, and then there are hereditary conditions and uh, things that happen in the life. For instance, uh, 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 this situation in John chapter, uh, John, John chapter 4, is that right? Am I correct? I'm, not, I'm teaching without notes and without uh, just verbatim here. Yeah, uh, uh, John 4, John 4, 17 says, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, you, you have said it well. I have no husband. For you had five husbands. Uh, uh, meaning that, uh, that Jesus knew what was happening. Now, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with the, blind, the man that was born blind for 38 years. Is that John? 
That's John 5. Thank you, thank you, thank you. John 5. And so it simply says that this man uh, was born blind, he, which had an infirmity 38 years. See, he was born blind. Yes, yeah, the pool of Bethesda. And so uh, I'm looking for an example of hereditary illnesses uh, in the Scriptures. And, and since I don't have any notes, I'm going to refer to one specific one, uh, which uh, uh, is the man born blind. And, and Jesus created in his, and that's John 9. He created in him uh, eyeballs. Uh, John chapter 9. Jesus created in him uh, eyeballs. He was born blind. And so uh, it's not sin that, uh, that made him blind. It's not uh, uh, sins of others that made him blind. It's not something to do with demonic. He was born blind. It's a baby born blind. And so we refer to that as hereditary. He simply, it started in the womb and, and, and it pursued the body and the baby was born blind. And then, of course, the example of things that happen for the glory of God. And there are many of them where Jesus heals uh, for the glory of God. So having covered these five examples and very poorly, I might say, because I want to get to something else. I want to go back to how do you get the information that you need to have before you pray? So that's the, the, the goal of this, these next 15, 20 minutes. How do you get the information before you pray? When you uh, look at uh, the experience of Paul as in Acts chapter nine, as he is touched by the Holy Spirit, you're going to see him going through a change in his life. Verse 10, chapter nine of Acts, there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias, which is the word means disciple. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for the one called Saul of Tarsus. So you have, right away after the experience of Paul in Damascus, he's taken to uh, a, a, a street called Straight in Damascus. And and he begins to work and bring another man into the picture to help Paul. It's called Ananias. as a disciple of Jesus. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. He has seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming to him. So you get an idea that the vision in Paul's uh, empowerment, salvation, and healing brought him into the house of Ananias. And the next thing that happens is that God begins to work uh, on Ananias to come to the house of Judas to help Paul in his experience. Notice that God appears to Paul, to Saul, then God appears in a vision to Ananias. This exchange of a vision moving is really the way God communicates to us is the way God relates to us as, as a, a vision, a revelation, an experience. And so let me, let me just show you this. He has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Let me read it again. I know this is sort of a, I told you I'm not looking to many notes. I'm just uh, putting it together as I talk to you. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight. And behold, he prays. And he, ha uh, uh, he prays. And he has seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming to him. So look at this. God appears 
to Saul to tell him there's a man coming to help him. God appears to Ananias telling him to go see Paul, to see Saul. You see God putting it together? He appears to, to, to Saul and tell him there's a guy coming to help him. He, he appears to Ananias and says, get together. He's putting things together. Now, is that something common and basic in prayer? The answer is yes. Now, let me just uh, say to you, maybe, maybe you're beginning to doubt and beginning to question me. You're beginning to say to me that uh, Rick is out of his mind. I've been out of my mind for a long time. What's the matter with you? Why am I saying this? It's because God reveals. God actually reveals to you what's going to happen. He did it here. He did it to Saul. He did it to Ananias. Why wouldn't do it to me? Oh, this is just uh, 2,000 years ago when the gifts stopped operating at the completion of the canon of Scriptus baloney. That's what I say to you. Why? Because it happens to me. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. It happens to me daily. So if it happens to me, it happens to everybody. Why is it that you begin to do things uh, in the impulse of your faith? It's because you're not led of the Spirit of God. When you're not led of the Spirit of God, you don't get anywhere. You turn people off. To be led of the Spirit of God, it blesses people. And so when ministry operates, when ministry is done, led of the Spirit of God, there are fruits. I don't know if I'm getting through you or not. I don't know if you're hearing or not. If you are paying attention or not. I know my phone is ringing off the hook. And uh, here, here, Betty, would you get this, please? Get Betty to open this call. Uh, some of you are calling me right now. It's the wrong time to call. I can't talk to you. <laughs> okay. And so, and so it says, it says this, that the revelation of the Holy Spirit happened to Ananias. Let's see. He has seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming to him, putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Because when Paul saw his vision, he, he was blind. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard of this man. <laughs> he kills people. He, much evil has been done uh, to your saints in Jerusalem. And, and, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name, Lord. And uh, don't require me to do this, please. Paul's evil, in, evil intentions had preceded him, but the Lord invaded those intentions, completely changing them in a second. But the Lord said unto him, go your way. For he is chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. Now, who is Ananias? A Presbyterian? He is a Methodist? He's got to be a re re renewed Baptist. How about a Pentecostal? Not, not of a sort. The American way of, uh, of somehow creating classes has destroyed this country, has corroded this country. You're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you're poor, you're rich, you're black, you're white. That just, that's, you know, I live in a country, I, I used to live in a country called Brazil. And, and, uh, and I tell you this, you don't know when the black stops and the white begins. There is discrimination in Brazil. But because of our government and what our presidents have done, we have classes now and we're splitting ourselves. You see... Ananias is not a Pentecostal. Ananias is not a charismatic. See, that's what you made up. Some, uh, uh, the devil has used preachers 
to declassify and classify who you are. And those preachers who have done that are going to respond to God or have already responded to God. Because God is not Pentecostal. God is not charismatic, charismatic fanatic, Presbyterian, Baptist, or, or, or Pentecostal. God is holy. So don't eat that lie. If you listen to me, do not eat that lie. You can minister with accuracy if you serve the Lord with heart. Now, verse 14 and 15, by the way, and 16, is the, de is the call of Paul, specific call of Paul, and how Paul dealt with it. So if the revelation came to Ananias about Paul, about Saul, now Paul. It was to be Saul, now it's Paul. And it came to a man called Ananias, and God revealed in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, why would he do it today? Do we have to live by blindness, psychologically induced gospel, to where we have to sort of a, a, a not hear from God? I beg to differ, folks. I really beg, 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 beg to differ. And so revelation comes when you, we hear the voice of God speaking to us. Now, does the voice speak to your brain? Does the revelation come in to looking at the trees and the birds in the air at 6 in the morning as, yeah, I used to say, that God speaks this way. Early morning, 6 o'clock, quiet lake. You can hear the birds. Pew, 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 pew. Shh. Quiet. You look up and there's a semi-truck <laughs> falling on the lake. <laughs> 18 wheeler out from heaven. He interferes with your quietness. But it's not that abrasive. It's very tender, very quiet. He spoke to Elijah that way, very tender. It wasn't in the fire, in the thunder, in the lightning, but a still small voice. The question here is that can the small voice be identified specifically without confusion? Can the small voice be, be known? When Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, began to teach, the Corinthian church, on how God speaks. He alluded to three movements of the Spirit of God that reveal. And the first one is the word of knowledge. Reveal something of the heart of God. The second is the word of wisdom. The third is discerning of spirits. These three powerful movements of the Spirit when we begin to get to know it and begin to discern it and begin to look at it and understand it, how it operates, it changes the game. Remember that the gifts and the call is without repentance. What do you mean? You don't have to be in fasting time. You don't have to be in forgiveness time. You can be in sin. You can be in any way you want to. It doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit knows that you dealing with trash. He will operate in your life when you understand it and accept it, and that closes the deal. How did Ananias heard the voice of God? Because he could identify it. All that God spoke to Ananias had to be related to the past. Let's take a look. The Lord said to him, Arise and go into the street is called straight, and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prays right now. <laughs> In other words, God knows that Ananias, that the Saul, that Paul is praying. He prays right now. What is Paul praying? God, I'm blind. I can't serve you if you don't heal my eyes. 
And so God says to Ananias, go over there, lay hands on Saul, because he is blind. He needs to see, because I have great things for him to do. That's past. And that's present. So the word of knowledge is past and present. It always travels backwards, but it comes to the present. You need to know the, if you want to know the past and the present in a prayer, God reveals to you. Just like peanut butter and jelly. I mean, he comes in and just give it to you sweet and tenderly. And so these three gifts are powerful gifts of revelation. Tomorrow I begin to do scriptures and show you where are they in the scriptures. But I, I, I don't want to prove to you biblically, uh, in which I will, every single gift I'll prove to you biblically. But I want to show you that when you begin with this heart of listening to God and understand what I just said to you, it's just enough to begin to operate. You don't have to go to seminary. You don't have to go to cemetery. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have whatever degree you want. It's the heart. The disciples didn't have any, 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 uh, any degree in that. They moved the world. It's the book of Acts. The reason why the book of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles. Because they began to hear God. They begin to see. They begin to call forth in things that be not as though they were. Can you improve? Listen, when you go to a, a, a place called Walmart, the first thing that happens at a Walmart is that a greeter. How you been? What is she there? There are three, five, ten thousand items there. Have you seen the items? If you go to the house section, man. You'll find pots and pants and this and that, everything to do with the kitchen. If you go into the automotive, you call all kinds of things related. Go to the fishing area. Oh, my goodness, there's a thousand little things to get the fish. If you go to the, to the dry goods, you find, if you, go to, if you go to where the meat is, you're going to find chicken, this and this and that and that and that, even turkey burger. How can you find all of that? You just ask the greeter, sir, I, I'm looking for a specific piece. has to do with a little plastic pan like this. So I can, uh, I can, I need a plastic pan this big. Uh, and she said, you go to the housewares on the left and begin looking uh, and see, and it'll be right there on the corner. And sure enough, it was right there. Let me ask you this. When somebody comes to church and you preach a beautiful sermon, and they are trying to respond to God, and conviction comes upon them, they should come to the altar for prayer, and a group of people be there waiting for them to pray for them. You service them like Walmart service you. Why the church stop serving the people? Why the church stop praying for the people? Why not have 15 people there that have eyes and ears to hear and pray with them? Well, because we're thinking that perhaps... They will cause more trouble than anything else. Well, it's because you don't know how to pray with accuracy. So if you learn, you can teach them, and the church will grow. A lot of people come to church, but the, big, the back door is greater than the front door. They come and get out of the back door. How do you stop the back door draining? By serving the people, by ministering to them. And tomorrow, I'll begin to deal with scriptures in terms of these, these gifts of revelation. Amen? I hope you got something from today. I hope you heard something. Did you, did you hear something? Yes. Uh, do I hear an amen? amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, that uh, you have the knowledge to reveal to us the need. In Jesus' name, amen.